Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll be showing you different ways of compressing or archiving files in the Linux console. I'm using Arch today to show you around, but this really applies to all Linux distributions, so you can be following along with whatever Linux distribution you have. In this Linux console, I'll give you a few examples, so let me clear things out. And first, I want to talk about what compressing files refers to, and that is the shrinking of the size of a file or directory of files, and these compressions use different types of algorithms that can take advantage of patterns in order to make the overall size of the files smaller while being compressed and decompress them to the normal size that they were before the compression. So before we get into some of those compression tools, let's talk about an archival tool called TAR. So TAR is something offered from a long time ago, which allows you to basically create an archived file. Let's create our first archive file here without compression. So I can do that by typing TAR space dash C to create an archive. V will show us progress and F allows us to specify a file name if we wanted to. So let's call this temp tmp dot tar and this will be the archive file that we create with tar and let's type in the directory that we would like to archive so i'm just going to do the temp directory that's located in the root directory and i received a permission denied that's because temp belongs to the system and not to my current user so I'll have to throw a sudo in front and type my password in for my super user. And now if I do ls, I see that I have a temp.tar file. So tar is used to group files together so they can be easily sent across computers and servers efficiently and easily. But now we know how to make an archived file here using tar. We'll move on to compressions next, but before we do, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Let's talk about three compressions here, which are bzip2, xz, and gzip. And the reason I wanna talk about these is sometimes you will see files with the extension .tar.bz2 or .tar.xz or tar.gz. It'll be nice to understand what these various different extensions mean and why they all have tar in the name, but let's first talk about xz, which is probably the best compression algorithm compared to the others that we'll visit, but it does come at a cost because it takes more resources in order to do that compression. So with that being said, our first compression tool is called XZ and we can just specify a file name that we want to compress. So let's let's just see what files we have here. I have the temp.tar file, so I could do XZ and do temp.tar and that should be enough. And if I do LS now, I have compressed that temp.tar file, so the archive file I created, into using xz so i have the temp.tar.xz extension now so how do i decompress this file let's first check the file size so instead i'll actually do ls lh and we're only concerned about the tar.xz file and now i see that it's 316 bytes here so to decompress this xz file what we can do is xz with a dash D flag and type in our temp.tar.xz file, which is currently located in this directory, and that will decompress the file. So it's easy as that to compress and decompress with XZ. And now if I list my contents, I have the temp.tar file, which is my archive file. So don't get confused between the two. One's an archive file, One's a compressed file. I will make one more mention. If you want the absolute best compression, you can use XZ, but you'll have to pass one flag in, which is the dash E flag. Some say this means extreme compression, and it follows the rules as before. I'll type in what file I want to compress. So my temp.tar file, if I do that, Let's list the contents again and see how big this file is. Looks like it couldn't do any better. It's still 316 bytes. But if you have an extremely large file, you could try the extreme flag. Just know that the compression algorithm will take up more resources. 
And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. All right, we'll move on to gzip. So I'll clear things out. And with gzip, we currently have the temp.tar.xz file. Let's decompress this. So xz base dash d. I'll decompress this and then type in the name of the compressed file. Now it's decompressed back to the .tar file. And this time I'll use a tool called gzip. And it's very much the same. So I do temp.tar. Now, if I list it out, I have the temp.tar.gz file. Let's check the size. Looks like we got it down even further to 291 bytes using gzip, which is great. Then to decompress things, we can use gzip again and just pass in the space dash D flag and type in our file. And once again, we have decompressed our file back to the temp.tar that it was. If we just check things here, now we can see that the file is 10 kilobytes. So that's quite the compression going from 10 kilobytes all the way down to 291 bytes. I'll make mention of two more flags you can use with gzip. You have the fast flag or you can use the best flag. So fast is going to go more quickly through the compression algorithm and best will compress it to the best of gzip's ability. One last tool I'll mention is bzip2. And again, we'll use the temp.tar file, very much similar to what we've done before. I'll list the size of this one as well now after it's been compressed with bzip2. This time it turned out to be 315 bytes and we can always decompress with bzip2-d and we'll put in our name of the compressed file. And if I list things out, we're back to the 10 kilobytes. Awesome job if you've made it this far. And if you haven't already smashed that like button, because now we'll begin tying in things all together. So you might be asking why an archive file was created and then we used a compression tool after the fact. Well, these are really intended to be used together. So we can do this by passing a flag into tar, which will allow us to use one of these compression algorithms. And then you will really understand the reason we use these extensions for our compressed files. So I'm clearing things out. Let me do ls to first write out what we have here. I'll remove this temp.tar file. And now I'll use tar with the gzip compression tool and specify a directory that I want to zip up. Of course, you can do this with the file name as well. And you'll start making sense of some of these flags that we've been using. So using tar this time, we'll just pass in some flags. I have tar space C to create an archive. Z, which will use the gzip compression tool. V, in order to display the progress. You don't necessarily need this, but it's nice to have on your screen so you can check how far along you are. And then F in order to specify a file name. Usually I find this the easiest way to go instead of the system creating its own based on what you're compressing. And now we can name our own file, which will look very familiar to you. If I do tmp.tar.gz, well, that looks very similar to something we did before. And I'll use the temp directory as my example again, and I'll need to throw sudo up in front and type my password in. And we see a few things that have been now archived and compressed together. Let's take a look at the file size this time, ls-lh, and that file should be called tmp.tar.gz because that's how we specified it. And look at that, 283 bytes this time. So you might be asking, all right, I have this temp.tar.gz file. How do I decompress it? Well, use tar. And instead of creating an archive, we want to extract it. So we use the X flag. We keep Z here to use the same compression tool that we did to decompress and VF stays the same. So now you know your flags here. We'll type in the file name that we want to extract and things should be extracted here. And we can see now we have the TMP directory, which we can go in and we have some information in here. And it looks like everything that was put in is still in this folder. Let's clear things out. And going back to the home directory, I'll remove temp from here. And I don't want this compressed tar.gz file, so I can remove that as well. And let's practice with the two other tools that we've 
learned about, which is XZ and BZIP2. Let's do BZIP2 first. You'll catch on that there's a familiar format here. So if I do tar with CJVF, this time I'll call my file tmp.tar.bz since we're using BZIP2. You might want to put uh, a two at the end because there are two versions of BZIP, BZIP1 and BZIP2. This makes it a little clearer on which compression tool you're using. And then we'll type in the directory name we want to, we want to compress and I'll need sudo at the beginning here. Let's give this a shot. And once I print things out of this directory, I see I have the temp.tar.bz2 compressed file created at this point. Now things are becoming less mysterious as sometimes you will see exploring the wonderful world of Linux you'll see .tarbz2 files, tar.gz, tar.xz, and now you're making sense of them. It's really an archive file with a different type of compression tool or algorithm being used to compress that file or directory. Moving on, let's extract this file. So if I do sudo, I'll do tar xjvf, and I'll type in the file name and look at that. We have temp located here. We can go inside of temp and it looks like I accidentally deleted everything out of there. No big deal. Um, let me just check my temp folder here. Yeah, there's nothing located in temp anymore. We can use a different file if we wanted to. Again, we created a compressed file and then extracted that compressed file. Let's do it one more time. We'll change up the directory since I didn't have anything in temp this time and we'll use XZ as our compression tool. This time, you could probably guess how to do this already. We just need to know how to change up one flag in order to make this work. So TAR space C, and then a capital J will allow us to use the XZ compression tool. And then we'll put the V in the F followed by a name. So this one I'll call examples dot tar dot xz because I'm going to point to another directory. I'll go in the Etsy netctl examples directory and that's the one I plan on zipping up. I'll probably need super privileges to do this so I'll put sudo in front and now what I'm doing is creating an archive file and then compressing that archive file using the xz compression tool and I'm compressing the folder located in Etsy netctl the examples directory. If I press enter, I see everything that was archived and compressed. And if I do ls, I see I have my examples.tar.xz file. All right, and of course, to extract that file, let me clear things up. I can do tar x with a capital J, vf, and then the file name, which was examples.tar.xz. And this generated an Etsy folder after I extracted things. So it's keeping the path of directories in order to get to the example. So if I did Etsy and inside of here, there's a netctl and examples. And if we open up examples, we have our various different examples located here. Well, that was a lot to learn about in order to compress our files. There, of course, are utilities like zip. I don't have it installed right now, but I could do sudo pacman syu and zip. That should get the zip compression tool, which allows me to cre create zip files, much like I would on a Windows computer if I was using one. Tar is native to Linux, so you're gonna catch that on most Linux distributions already pre-installed and ready for you to start using it. And once zip is installed, it's fairly easy to use. I just need to specify a file name for the zip file. So let's just call it archive.zip and we'll specify the file name that we want to zip up. So for example, let's just do the bash profile file. And there we go. Now we have an archive.zip file. So that was a file. Let's just zip up a folder as well. We can do that with a zip and then the flag dash R recursively, then specify our name for the zip file. So archive dir for directory, Call, that's gonna be a zip file and the location of the directory name. You can actually specify more than one directory if you like, but I'll zip up that Etsy folder that we have here in our home directory. Look at that. And now if I do ls, I see the archive dir.zip file. Funny thing is with zip, you'll also need the unzip tool as well. So I don't currently have that, but 
if I went and got that. So Pac-Man SYU for me and get unzip. Then I can unzip my files that I just created. And now I can type in unzip and the file I want to unzip. So I'll just do archive.zip. And this is warning me that the bash profile file will be replaced, which I don't necessarily want. I'll just put no. And I can also do unzip, let's say the archive directory zip file into perhaps another directory. I would use the dash D file and then I can specify the directory I wanted it in. So, so maybe I'll just put it in temp here and that will extract everything into the temp directory. Now you can see we have the Etsy folder and inside the Etsy folder, there's a netctl with examples and all of our examples inside of it. Well, now you understand how to use these compression tools and what the various extensions mean. Hopefully this sheds some light on how to use compression tools in a Linux console. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me and a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.